And we are officially live. Happy New Year, folks. Happy New Year. Take a little swig. Take a little drinky drink of the liquor. Hmm. Happy New Year's, everybody. Welcome to a very impromptu surprise episode of Gregory Hall Live. I'm your host, the most important man you'll ever want to know, Gregory Hall. And tonight I'm joined by a very beautiful, talented woman who is not only an actress, but she's also a businesswoman. She's a CEO of her own company called Star Baby Enterprises. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you Miss Jordan Elizabeth Gerber. You're the folks. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> don't, tell, don't, tell me, don't tell me you're a little bit tipsy already. Oh, no, not at all. I've only had a couple of swigs of my giant bottle of Vu right now, so no, I'm good. We, we, we can keep going. <laughs> I, was about to, I was about to say, like, New Year's is a, is a marathon, not a sprint. Right? <laughs> no, I have to keep going. We have to, we have to keep going. We have to drink all the liquor in the apartment before 1 a.m. to really get it thrown in. But yeah, it's 2014. I think this is great. You know, we all fancy out, you know what I mean? I got the got the bling on, you know what I mean? The, the, you know, I got the, the blonde going, I got the hat, you know, I got my fur on. Mm -hmm. It's fake for all you animal rights activist people out there. If you got to jump down my throat and oh, you guys are just killing animals now, no. No, it's fake. It's all it's all for the love of style. So. It's all for the love of style. I don't, I don't believe in killing animals for fur. I I, I don't want a cat for crying out loud. She's on the couch right now. <laughs> okay. And plus, do you really think I can afford a mink? I mean, come on, people, really. <laughs> I, had a, I took a picture with this on a couple months ago. I had a couple friends get at me kind of hard via Instagram. I was like, does it look like I can afford a real, like, rabbit, <laughs> like, or mink, like, star? Like, come on. <laughs> Yo, Instagram's big now. They'll, they'll hunt you down. Did you see that guy with trophy scars? Oh, no. What's that all about? So there's this guy... Uh, this lovely gentleman in the thing in the city who takes pictures of himself wearing girls, like naked girls around his neck. What the fuck? He calls them trophy scars. I think it's genius. A lot of girls are like, that's disgusting. I think it's genius. I think it's a wonderful social piece and it's funny as hell. So um, <laughs> to me, it's like, you do your thing. I, I, I see you. I appreciate what you're doing. I know all, all the women around the world now are like, how dare you? <laughs> yeah, well. We we live in a very much hypersensitive era. <laughs> very true. So very you true. can't say you do anything without getting mad. It's like everybody's an activist now. What kind of shit is that? It's true. So I was saying the other day, you know, we actually have another show on this channel called Regular Standing Lunch, you know, hosted by a good friend of mine, Manny McGee. And I always say, you know, if you want intellect, you want uh, conversation, you know, uh, you know, a show that makes you want to think, you know, go to her show. If you want the stupid shit, the silly shit, you come to my show. You know what I mean? I, I do the dumb shit. I don't do the all, the all deep stuff. We do the silly shit here. <laughs> good luck. So, so tell my viewers a little bit about yourself. Now, you actually started out. You know, we, we run your own company and everything, but we'll get to that in a minute. But you, you actually started out as an actress, or you're still currently acting. Yeah. Um. Again, my name is Jordan Elizabeth Gelber. I'm 25. Um, I am an actress and an entrepreneur in New York City. I did start out as an actress. I, I uh, went to performing arts high schools when I was younger. And then I um, went to Marymount Manhattan College. And when I was there, I did an audition. To go there, I studied uh, communication arts and graphic design. So I acted all through college and started doing graphics. And through graphic design, I really learned a lot about startups and business and... Um, it was a way, to, doing graphics was a way to make my own hours and still be able to pursue my passions. So, um, yeah, that's that's kind of how it got started. And I worked with a lot of great companies like the Meyer Group, um, which is a real estate company. I worked with the owner, Michael Meyer, and um, a couple other great companies. And it really, it's through working directly with the, the entrepreneur, the, the founder, that I really just like soaked in all this knowledge. And it, was, it allowed me to just be able to do what I love, which was acting, and still find ways to make money through business, and I realized I loved both as much as the other. So I, love, I loved acting just as much as I loved business, which is pretty much saying I love creating, but I love making money. So <laughs> that's kind of where I stand. You know, doesn't it seem like, you know, I, I don't want to say society, but it's within our field of, you know, the entertainment industry and artists and all that stuff, 
like that's frowned upon. You know, it's like, how dare you make money or or want to be a business person? You're an artist. I'm like, what the hell are you talking about? Like, you need money mm-hmm. to do things. You know, like, yeah. <laughs> shit, I'm. No, no, I, I really, I think that's a really great point. You know, that was one of the reasons why I founded my company. I was so sick of people like me and younger being taken advantage of um, in the industry because they're like, oh, well, you have to eat, sleep, and breathe acting. And, yeah, I used to eat, sleep, and breathe acting, and I miss that. I miss getting up in the morning and going to acting class and reading all the books and everything. But at the same time, I love the business because it's show business. A lot of people forget that. One of my, my uh, best mentors and, and the closest friends, Frank Petrelli, he told me that. Like, it's show business. And yet so many people don't know about the business part. But I always wanted to, when I was in an audition, I always wanted to be like the smartest girl in the room. So I didn't want to just be the girl who knew her lines. I liked being able to like converse with the people behind the table that I'm interviewing with and auditioning with. I didn't want to be a chicken with my head cut off when I'm on a set. You know, I wanted to really know who does what and what does this. So I understood all the different aspects of what was going on. And yeah, it is frowned upon. It's it's very unfortunate because, you know, when you're when you're an acting major in college, which is something that I didn't do. Um, you're told not to audition your entire, depending on what school you go to, you're told not to audition the entire time you're in college. But that's like telling an a, that's like telling a business major you can't interview for an internship. It's the same thing. So by the time you graduate, you're auditioning with kids who are younger than you, who've been doing it longer than you, and more successful than you because you don't understand the business. So I started my company because I wanted to kind of be that half step between people who had the talent but didn't know where to go. And didn't want to, didn't have like the five hundred dollars to spend on new headshots, or didn't have the thousand dollars to do the three day intensive with some manager, but really wanted to kind of say, where where can I go? Um, how can I really just do a basic outline for myself so I don't look like an idiot walking into an audition, and really try to start making making a mark for myself. And and you know I I loved educating people and every time I was on set people would ask me, well how did you learn this? Oh you hear that you hear the fireworks? Everyone's getting ready for, for New Year's. Is that fireworks or that's gunshots? <laughs> I, well I am in Brooklyn. I am in Brooklyn. Um Oh but, man, you get new get new Brooklyn. They ain't oh, old Brooklyn. Oh my God. <laughs> oh, I, know what old Brooklyn Holy hell. I know what old Brooklyn is like. Trust me. <laughs> My father grew up in Brooklyn. I had relatives in Brooklyn, and I used to go to Brooklyn as a kid with my grandmother. Trust me, I know what old I know what Bed Stuy used to be. <laughs> not, when, not when it's called Stuyvesant Heights now. Yeah. Like back when I was a kid, it was Bed Stuy do or die. So. <laughs> yeah, my dad. My dad grew up in Brooklyn. He went to Erasmus High. I don't even know if you know what that is, but Erasmus is not that good now. So. I feel you. But uh, like you were saying, it is sadly frowned upon, but I wanted to break that barrier and be like, it's it's free knowledge. It's just every, someone's got to learn how to use it and be that channel to other people. So like what fuels me is helping other people and not just the uh, you know acting, but the entire entertainment industry. And now it's bled to, into the fashion industry as well. Um, so yeah, that's kind of what motivates me to do what I do. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah, I agree. After people respect me, so I, I, I absolutely agree because I, you know, I, I think because you know, as, as an artist, you know, we're totally, you know, right side of the brain type of people, you know. But and I think you know, your artistry, you know, being creative, your, your creativity, is something that cannot be taught. That's something oh, that yeah. you're born with. It's in your DNA, it's in your code. Mm-hmm. But I do believe business, you can be taught. And I, you know, especially with the era we're in right now, with this whole internet shit. Mm-hmm. Why not learn a business? Why not try to be an entrepreneur and own your own stuff? I mean, it's a way to protect yourself. That's how I look at it. It's a way to protect oh, yeah. your art. Definitely. I mean, the thing I think is is insane. Only within the last six years has this whole, um, you know, between MySpace and Facebook and YouTube and, and the fact that you can become YouTube famous overnight. I mean, there are so many people who are, like, especially musicians. I think musicians are the most successful at this, but who use social networking sites to really brand themselves and become successful. And only a few people really can do that well. I mean, it's amazing how how much that it's grown, but no one really knows how to think, oh, I want to make a video. Okay, well, what kind of video you want to make? And, and they think that they're special because they're doing the same cover of the same song for the thousandth time, and it's not just about that. It's like, who sees that? 
Who are you reaching out to? Why are you different? Um, what makes you different? What drives you? If this becomes successful, where do you want to be? I mean, my friend Giorgio is a musician. He's in, he's insanely talented, and um, he actually, as a joke, he went to Sonic last year, and him and his friends went through the drive-through, and he sang his order on guitar to the to the person on the, the intercom, and they recorded it and they put it up on YouTube. It got on Reddit, and he became YouTube famous in like a week, and he performed on Ellen. I mean. And this is something just crazy that happened because we have this instant connection through the internet and all these different websites that, you know, there's so much to do, but like I said, only very few people really know how to tap into it. So, um, well, yeah. Well, I think that kind of boils down to knowing who you are. Yeah. You have to know what kind of artist you are, and you have to kind of have a certain game plan. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, um, even for me, for example, you know, I, I started out in podcasting, but I always saw myself more than a podcaster. You know, I'm an entertainer. The things mm -hmm. like the rank, like the act, or like the, you know, my hands, as my lawyer says, my hands are in everything. It was funny, my lawyer said that to me at a meeting when he said, man, your hands, you get your hands in everything. And I was like, well, shit, we in a recession, of course. <laughs> <laughs> we, we in a recession, of course my hands, I got my hands in nothing, shit. But, um, <laughs> but like, even what I do, it, you know, if I would have did this, let's say even five years ago, I probably would have had more of a fan base right now. But you know, truth be told, the game is very saturated right now. So what's going to be, you know, uh, what am I going to do to stand out? And I started a supremacy project, but you know, recently, if anybody follows me on Twitter or Facebook or whatever, you know that I'm in the process of changing and changing the name. I'm kind of done with the whole key supremacy project. The name itself, only because everything on the internet is geek. Geek mm -hmm. this, geek that, or this, geek that, dork this, geek that, and it's kind of like, well, what's going to separate myself uh, from everybody else? Mm -hmm. And in in a way, you know, for what I, I do tap into the geek and nerd culture because that's a part of me, but it doesn't define me. Mm -hmm. You know, you and I had a discussion. I love fashion, and as many of the things that I love. So to me, it's kind of like I want to appeal across the board to the masses. So mm -hmm. it's kind of like, you know what? Everybody else that does the geek and nerd thing, cool, but I don't even see myself in that same lane as them. You know what I'm saying? And it kind of goes back, I think you really have to know who you are as an artist mm -hmm. and have some sort of game plan. Yeah, I mean, it really, it depends on what you want your identity to be. And you have to really know who you are and where your room is to grow. Because I feel like a lot of people are so like, well, I'm this, and so I'm going to stay like this forever. And they don't understand that it's like, well, you could be true to your roots, but you have to be able to grow. You know, roots form a tree, but the tree gets bigger. You That's know, and it has leaves, and it goes this way, and it goes this way, and it goes all these different ways. You have to make sure that you know which path you're taking, and you know how high you want to get to. Some people want to be this, this big. Some people want to go all the way to the top, but you have to understand that, you know, you get to the top through very, very different ways. You get it through being true to yourself, knowing when, when to compromise, Sticking to your relationships and making sure that at the end of the day that you love this more than anybody else, but you, and you know that you're talented. Because so many people are like, oh, well, I just need to get discovered and then I'll be fine. No, you discover you and you show people what they're missing. And that's how I feel. Absolutely. You know? Look at you get deep. I was about to say yeah, something. Yeah, I get deep. I was I about get to get really all into it. I live in there. <laughs> Listen, I was, I was about to get real silly right now. I was like, you know I'll what? I'll go crazy. Like, I was about to get several. I said, you know what? I told a young person this couple months ago. I said, listen, you want to make it? Get your education. Mm -hmm. Stay in school. Yeah. If that shit don't work out, you better sing. You better <laughs> dance. You better rap. You got to entertain these folks. You got to entertain these white people, man. You got to do all that shit, man. You got to. <laughs> no, I think that's a very good point. <laughs> you, got to, you got to sell your soul. I'm trying to sell like Somebody get me a reality show. I'll no, I think about that all the right? time. Let's just get a reality show. Let's just do it. Hell yeah, shit. At this point, I don't, I don't give a rat's ass. I'm like, shit, give me real. I'll pimp the hell out of that shit. I can get ratchet on camera. Everybody else is getting famous for dumb shit. <laughs> Ain't that some shit? People getting famous for dumb shit? That's crazy. Oh my god. I'm still. I'm like, I can jump around. Like, give me a TV show. I like exactly. partying. I have my whole own bottle of champagne. Look at. A girl and her champagne. There, we have a reality TV show. Like it's, it's so funny. But you know what? Um, reality TV can be one of two things: it can be really stupid or it can be really educational. Um, like I watched the funniest show the other day. 
I watched this new show on E! where these like personal shoppers who must make an insane amount of money and they, they just aid like the wealthy like 10% of the country. Like there's that one like golden percent of America that just has an exorbitant amount of money for no reason. And like, these people personal shop for them. And like it's so stupid, but I can't stop watching it. But that's one of the dumb things that you see. And but when I was watching it, I'm like this is so stupid, but now I know I need to make enough money so I can get a personal shopper to go jump in a pond and get like me the fish that I want. Like it, it's just, it's ridiculous how we set the standard to what we, you know, are so. I don't know. I'm going all weird now. <laughs> just keep no, drinking. No, no, no. I keep drinking. No, no. If we keep drinking. We'll get more silly. Uh, but <laughs> no, I, I totally get it. Like I have, listen. I have my addiction to ratchetness. I watch. Uh, that ratchet ass show I watch, uh, loving hip hop and the Real yeah, House yeah. Housewives in Atlanta and all that stuff. But I mean, you know what? It's funny. Let let, let me you know, let's go off topic here for a second. For fashion, you and I have a you know something in common. We both love fashion. Yeah. Now, personally, for me, I don't know if I could have a personal shop, but only because like I feel like I don't need a stylist. I like to style myself because you know maybe it's my OCD, but I'm very 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 particular. On what I, you know, as far as my style, like I know my style, I know what I like, I know the designers I like, and mm -hmm. I'm a fan of, and I can just, I can see myself having a personal shop or a stylist and just be like, nope, don't like that, don't like that, don't like that, take that back, get that shit out of here, what the hell are you thinking? So I don't want to put nobody through that torture. So I just <laughs> rather style myself. Like, and I have my designers that I like, you know, I'm a very big fan of Versace, and I can't afford it, but that's all good. Uh, <laughs> one I'm, day, one day. One day, I'm okay. getting there. You know, it's funny. Around the holidays, I went to go meet a friend in New York, and I got the early so the kill time. I went to Macy's, so I go into Gucci, and uh, so I'm in Gucci looking around, and uh, I was saying to myself, I was like, "Oh shit, I did fucked up. I did not bring my white friend with me." Because you, know, <laughs> you know that race, you know, racial profiling yeah. is at an all-time high. We know the Barney situation. And you know, about a couple weeks ago on the, the holiday special with the Greg and Jen show, I did a little guide to shopping in the holiday season while being black. And I said one of the things is bring your white friend. And I didn't bring my white friend. I mean, granted, you know, I was looking nice, had my bow tie, had my whole non-threatening Negro look going. Mm -hmm. So I didn't like a threat. But I was like, oh shit, I didn't bring my white friend. I'm, you know, they may get scared or something. <laughs> but you know, I kind of had this whole Theo Huxtable thing going on, so I was cool. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> Man. But, so what happened in Gucci? Nothing. I just was looking around. It was funny. I was looking at these sneakers I wanted, and they were like $500. I was like, yeah, get the fuck out of here. I ain't for that shit. I'm like, I like, I like my Nike. <laughs> my nice $80 Nike from I like, some, like, I like designer sneakers, but uh, I could. I like designer sneakers, but I, can't, I don't care how much money I ever made. I could not see myself rocking $500 sneakers unless yeah. they were giving to me. That, I mean, I feel the same way. It's it's funny, you know. I, I'm watching this show the other day, and I think it was a Hermes or Bir it was a Birkin bag or an, probably a Birkin bag actually, and um, and it was like a hundred and twenty thousand dollars for this bag, a pink crocodile bag. Hmm. And I'm love. Don't get me wrong, it's a beautiful bag, and I really respect it. I lo I love fashion, but for me, I would spend money on like thousand dollar dresses and and like. Louboutins, right? Because that's that's what my I want. But there are people who like just spend so much money on like shoes, like sneakers for me. Like I could never wear five hundred dollars sneakers. But granted, I'm sure there's a pair of five hundred dollars sneakers out there that I would drool all over and wear once. But that you know, but that is fashion. You know, it's like a it's like your own trophy in your closet. And you know, what one day you'll we'll pull them out and you'll you'll know what it felt like to buy them and own them and wear them and what that means to you because fashion is status. So I mean, absolutely. You know that that I, I understand where you're coming from. It's kind of like uh, it's kind of like Jay Z once said. It's like a small victory. Yeah. That you know you make it's like a little, like a little victory. But it, it, I I do agree with that to a certain extent. But to me, also fashion is art. It's an extension of my my personality. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like even in the realm of what I do, I don't really see any other anybody on the internet if they podcast or blog or whatever that looks like me. I think mm -hmm. that's one of the key things to stand out. Like, there's not too many you know, people out there that's talking about fashion and that in this realm. And all you know, anybody knows me. I love jewelry. I'm a flashy mm -hmm. dude. That's just my personality. You know what I mean? That's what I like. That's my taste. 
You know what I mean? I like the bling. I'm from Jersey. You know, is what it is. Uh, we like the bling over here. Um, but uh, that's just me, and I think you really got to just know you. You know what I mean? And, oh, yeah. and fashion is art. Like I said, it's art to me. So when I'm, I'm when I'm dressing, I'm like a, a canvas. I'm like a, a, a painting. Look at me. <laughs> I walk yeah. in the room. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I understand with the personal shopper thing. For me, it's like you know, I worked in I worked in fashion. I've worked been working in it now for almost a year and a half. I was I was marketing director for a fashion startup called New York Fashion Shows for about a year. And when I worked there, um, my my previous employer, she was an investment banker, so she had a very corporate setting when it came to you know the job so with her I was dressed very corporately it was more like corporate Jordan I had my suits and I had these dresses in colors that I would never wear normally but that's that's what he, she wanted to portray so now you know I'm developing my own style like I like today I'm wearing I'm wearing I'm in, I'm so into leggings right now especially because it's you know winter outside so I have like skeleton leggings on right now and I have these crazy ass earrings but that's just me because I'm I'm, I'm kind of edgy and this is me hanging out at home so for me if I was gonna get a personal shopper I would have someone who was like help me dress my age and be still be seen as a professional you know because I, I love skulls like for me if I had all the money in the world my closet would be lined with Alexander McQueen because I love his whole beautiful chaos kind of concept because that's that's me and that's what I convey for you you're very blinged out but you're very put together and I love that I love seeing how people translate themselves through what they wear especially in like their own professional setting like their own professional sense uh, like for instance I know that I can walk into a meeting and I'll wear, I'll wear leather from top to bottom and I might look like I'm from a gothic memoir but I know that as long as I exude the confidence that I do and I act professionally and like this is who I am and this is how I dress and this is what I can do for you and people see you completely different you know I it, it, it love that because what you wear really makes you feel the way you want to feel oh absolutely yeah. absolutely I mean I'm a big fan of I'm a big fan of Tom Ford Oh yeah, definitely. I mean, very sleek, very elegant, you know, very professional, with a little style to it. You know, the one thing I don't like is like those. You know, I used to work for a rent car company, mm -hmm. and uh, a lot of the I used to, you know, I was a car prep, which pretty much means I drove and washed cars all day. But the guys who were like the the, the dudes that you know did the sales, they had to wear suits, and they always wore these tied ass. Regular suits that was all loose that I couldn't stand. It what cheap clone. And I'm one of them guys like you got to be put together. Like I like you know like Tom Ford, very sleek, very slim fit. Because you know if you get a tailor made suit, it's very pricey, but you don't have to anymore. You can get something that's very slim fit and fit to you. And um, you know, like I'm a fan of Tom Ford. I'm a fan of uh, Rad Simmons. Uh, Rad Simmons mm -hmm. to a certain degree. I, I don't. I don't get down with the whole dress long shirt thing. <laughs> I don't know what that's all about, but you know, I'm a fan of, of, of Rat Simmons and Rick Owens and Alexander Wayne. You know what I mean? They, they, they have a sense of style, but with the edge to it. You know what I mean? So you don't I'm, want to I'm really. Into, yeah, I, I really. Uh, I just saw the new um, 2014 Burberry collection, and, you know, they have all the lovely, like, very British trench coats and stuff, but they have a whole new look to their 2014 collection, and it's all like encrusted, and they use like textures like latex and stuff, and it's very, uh, it, it's it's just very like rock and roll meets like corporate America, and I just I love it. Oh my god, I'm so into it right now. There's like three pieces that I'm like thinking of in my head that I'm gonna save up to buy, but um, you know I I feel ya. I mean there are some people like. Oh my God! In my old job, someone, the woman used to wear like these really disgusting tight skirts and like the button jacket. She looks so stiff, and I'm like, that doesn't read fashion to me. I don't mm -hmm. want to work with that. Looks like a billboard. Like you're about to do my taxes and audit me. It doesn't read like <laughs> I want to produce a fashion show and have the world come see my fashion show. You know, but to each his own. Style is style. You know, that's why. Like like you said, I like Alexander Wayne. He's great. Tom Ford, especially. I love Hugo Boss. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, for me, one day, one day, I'm gonna get myself a nice tailor-made woman's suit because I think women in suits are fantastic. Um, oh, yeah. Monet. Yeah, right. Yeah. He's amazing. Yeah. She is truly amazing. Um, but yeah, I mean, a little bit of everything. I think that's you gotta mix it up and really find out what's yours. 
Okay, so I want to ask you this question. So I'm talking okay. about this Kanye West, or, what, or as I like to call Kanye West, my favorite lovable Negro. <laughs> now, if you have, uh, if you have not been living on the rock, you've known uh, Kanye West and his rants lately. And his, I've heard a few of them, not all of them. I kind of drawn them out. <laughs> And his issues with the the fashion industry. What is your opinion on him? And and not so much opinion on him, but what is your opinion on how he feels about the fashion industry? Um, I'll be honest. I don't really remember what he said about the fashion industry because ever since he said like I am a god or something on I forget. I think he was on Jimmy Kimmel and he was like really ranting about himself. So I don't really, re I don't remember. What did he say about fashion again? Sorry, please refresh well, me. The whole thing was, well, I know the song you're talking about, the I Am A God song. We did not actually like that song because I kind of feel like that myself. Like, I will I, say, Yeezus is a great album. Don't get me wrong. It's a great, it's yeah, a great I, I'm, album. I'm in the car sometimes like, yeah, I Am A God. What? You know what I'm saying? But, yeah. No, no, I'm not talking about his music. I love his music, but he just, in general lately, when he's in on, on a lot of talk shows, I mean, I, I, I respect his level of, like, confidence within himself, and I think it's mm -hmm. really great that he's, like, you know, I am a genius in a model of because he, he, you know, he's a very smart individual. But I think he mm -hmm. he takes his status to a different level sometimes, where it goes past being like a role model and an inspiration to just being like a I'm a cocky bastard. But to each his own. Like live it up. If you're gonna be a cocky bastard, be a cocky bastard to the to the biggest extent, which I think he does. It as well. Yeah, and like I said, Jesus is freaking amazing. He owns it. I respect him for that. Like I have no yeah. problems with him being a cocky son of a bitch because I'm a cop. That's oh what, yeah, I mean I'll we are, we have to be. Yeah, I'll be a hypocrite. I'm a cocky son of a bitch myself. But here's the thing about, about Kanye. Now, what he was saying about the whole fashion is pretty much in lame terms is he feels like he's not being accepted within the fashion world. So about the gatekeepers, okay, and not letting him create and not letting him do certain things. And pretty much speaking on how that world is very racist and all these things. And here's my thing about it. I've always joked about it, but on a serious note, mm -hmm. I, always, I understand what he's saying. And I do agree with him. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? The fashion world is, you know, it is racist. I mean, especially when you're talking within the European um, setting. Definitely. But this is, what, <laughs> this is what Kanye has to understand. It's like, why do you want to sit at the table with a bunch of dudes that don't want you there? Of course. Why would I mean, you want? To, you know what I mean? Like, why would you want to see? The thing is, it's kind of like okay, if I if I started a fashion line, mm -hmm. okay, and and I understand we talk about that ceiling, that glass ceiling, because he doesn't want to be labeled urban. You know, when when uh when, when P Diddy Combs brought out Sean John, very great line. Mm -hmm. Even though he just you know pimped out a couple of FIT students, but whatever. Uh, <laughs> but uh, teachers on, but um he, you know. It still was kind of label urban, but it still had this had sort of a certain elegance to it. Mm -hmm. But you know what I mean, and, and a lot of other you know MC Jay Z, Rockaway, and mm -hmm. uh, Fifty Cent, Dean Cole, and so on and so forth. But Kanye wants to be in that couture, mm -hmm. you know, setting, and I mean, with that glass ceiling. And I, and I, like if I started a fashion line. If they didn't accept me in that couture setting, guess what? It wouldn't bother me because I still have a fashion line. I'm still making money. I'm still being me. So mm -hmm. if, if my whole thing with Kanye is this. I understand what you're saying. You know what I'm saying? But if you're going to talk about racism and as far as within the fashion world, talk about how they won't allow a lot a lot of these designers, especially European designers, don't want a lot of African-American women mm -hmm. as, as models. Yep. Talk about that, Kanye. You know what I mean? Yeah, no, I completely agree with you. I really think that, um, you know, race in the, in the, indus in the industry, it's, it's like a touchy subject that people know is there, but just recently, I think, have been talking about it. You know, I just, I saw an, an interview with Chanel Iman, that she's a beautiful, she's a beautiful model, right? And she's talking mm -hmm. about how, I mean, I see her everywhere now. She was talking about how she went for a casting one time, and they said, no, no, don't worry, we already have a black model. And in my head, I'm like, but these girls are so beautiful, so beautiful, and you're, you're showing clothing to the masses. I mean, I, I think, you know, going back to Kanye, to me, I think you're right. I'm like, if, you don't, if they don't want you to play in their sandbox, make your own damn sandbox. You know? Absolutely. Um, and, I just I just agree with the fact that he's saying like European designers I completely agree I think 
the way America views fashion is like America views music. There's a whole other world out there that no one uh, realizes is exists, exists. And same with fashion. I mean, I just got back from Paris and Russia, and fashion there is ridiculous. It's even more of a status symbol. Well, I, to, in, the way that I felt is that it's even more of a fashion a status symbol, especially for women in like Moscow and Paris than it is here. Um, like here it's very commercialized as it is overseas but it's it's like a whole different like they they act completely different about it it's much more regal at least that like I said that's how I felt I was an American American in Europe like I'm sure I'm gonna feel that way regardless but you know I look at Andre 3000 right and he oh, yeah. in his own right is very couture you know with the hats and the suspenders and the very dapper John looking outfits and he has made a huge style icon of himself you know I think Kanye he just doesn't like people that don't like him, and if they don't like him, he points them out and says, oh, well, this is wrong. You know what? Instead of talking about how bad they are, make something worth remembering so they want to be a part of your life. It's no different than advertising. People like things they can remember. So if you make something memorable, aside from the fact that you're Kanye West, but you're actually talented, make a piece of clothing that's as memorable as your music, and people will say that's couture. Because, Absolutely. You know... I think that, yeah, in Europe, they, they completely view it differently. That's because the style and the need and the want is differently. It's, like, mm -hmm. different there. But, yeah, I think I think he touched a very good point, but I don't think he executed it as successful as he could have. Well, yeah, he definitely gets very uh, emotional about things. I mean, I get it. He wants to get to that level because he wants to also get his hands on the certain fabric. I mean, you know, the days of just saying, okay, I'll get a T-shirt and put my logo on it and a sell are over. You know, the consumers know the fabrics. They know the stitching. You know, you can't fool them anymore. And I get that. He wants the, 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 the very fine fabric. You know what I mean? But still, I mean, come on. Like, why do you want to play in sand in this sandbox? I mean, you look at Pharrell, for example. Mm -hmm. I mean, Pharrell has definitely had dealings. I think I'm not sure. I could be wrong, but correct me if I'm wrong. I think he had dealings with Mark Jacob at one point, but he did, and it's still booming, still booming. He did wonders with the the Billionaires Boys Club, the BBC line. Mm -hmm. He and then and when he endorsed Bait, he didn't go to the Europeans. He went to Japan. He went to Tokyo. Went to Tokyo. But that's, a, that's the thing. When he goes there, he absorbs the entire culture. It's something that is also very ingrained within him. I mean, Kanye West, if he felt like, for instance, if Kanye West wanted to be involved with, like, a French line, go to freaking Paris. Go go to the Louvre. Absorb everything around you. Feel the beat of the music. Go to the clubs where people listen to you, your music, and then go somewhere that's completely different. I mean, you know he loves culture shocks. I mean, Jesus is, like, so many different levels. And, you know, mm -hmm. he's a very literary man. I mean... He could take all the knowledge that he has and find a French designer and be like, I'm Kanye West. I'm a status symbol because I'm Kanye West. Let's put something together and make something about fashion with your eye and my eye so he can learn and launch something. And from there, you make something bigger. I mean, let's take another musician, right? Gwen Stefani. She wanted to start designing bags. She started working with Le Sports Sack, right? And from that one line... Of just working with the sports back on and having their own little segment. Oh, when Stefani does Lamb for the sports act, whatever, and then Lamb became a huge line. It became a huge couture line all on its own. And then it has like the baby one, mm -hmm. Harajuku lovers, all these different things. But they started out by working with something more established and making it grow and kind of seeing how the industry worked, and then making it bigger and becoming known and becoming a staple within the fashion industry. And so many lines have happened that way and started that way. I mean. I'm working with evening wear designers right now. Like, Janique is one of my, my favorite designers and I'm very good friends with the designer. And Janique is, is uh, comparable to, like, Sherry Hill. So if someone asks, like, who they like, it's Sherry Hill. It's, like, those lovely evening dresses. I mean, Corey, who's the designer, has got beautiful ones that I love more. But, um, you know, Sherry Hill worked for Giovanni, who's one of the biggest dressmaking people. And then she branched off and started her own line. I mean, everyone does it that way. It's a learning curve. So for him to just sit around and point the finger and be like, this sucks, do something about it. And I'm sure he will. I'm sure he's working on a line right now. And maybe he should go to Japan. I mean, like, you know, I'm sure if Will I Am wanted to start a fashion line tomorrow, he could because he's involved in the same way, you mm -hmm. know? But I think it's just a matter of taking what you know and what you have and not be frustrated that you can't do it, but find a different way to approach it. So I got very heated on that. I'm sorry. <laughs>
No, no, that, that's what we like on the show. Shit, we bring the real on the show. We don't bring the country. Think this is. This ain't no. It's not a family show. <laughs> no family shows. No family show. But um, now you are the CEO of Starberry mm-hmm. Enterprises. Mm-hmm. So tell a little bit to my viewers and listeners about Starberry Enterprises and what you do there. Star Baby Enterprises, ugh, my little love child. Um, so, Star Baby Enterprises launched the day I quit my last job, which was July 27, 2013, which is now last year because it's 2014, which is looking to believe. Uh, oh, yes. But um, it launched. <laughs> oh! um, I'm gonna take another swig of champagne because we did that. The drink your wine. <laughs> Oh my, I'm, I'm running low. This is not good. I'll give you some. Um, <laughs> so, I launched the company on July 27th, and within that period of time, I knew without a doubt I had to produce my own fashion show. Um, I was doing that at my last job, and it was like all this year, I was there a full, like literally a year almost to the day. And I said, I did not work this hard and did not bust my ass and spend all my time and hours just to be taken advantage of and kicked to the curb. I know so much. I could do this on my own. I'm, you know, I'm smart. And people actually like working with me. So I said to myself, I got to do this. I don't care if I have to sell blood on the street or I have to go and like pawn all my stuff. I was going to make a fashion show happen. And I literally produced a fashion show in two and a half weeks. Um, I launched my first event, which was Janique Fashion Week, on September 8th, I believe. <laughs> I can't believe I don't remember. But it's the 7th and 8th. It was a Sunday, and it was the only brunch fashion show within Manhattan. Um, and I had over 300 people. I was completely sold out. Uh, my One of my favorite people in the world, Ski Johnson, celebrity five-time Grammy Award-nominated Ski Johnson, he attended my show. Um, Miss Elliot was supposed to come. I mean, Miss Elliot, Queen Latifah was supposed to come, but she couldn't come at the time. And um, it literally was amazing. I had such great love and support from everyone around me. My parents were like super impressed because I put all my own money, my life, my energy into this show. And um, you know, I had a great line, Janique, who I had worked with doing graphics. I make his catalog every year. That's what I'm making right now um, for him. Uh, I worked with him for three years, and he was like, he said to me. When I was working in New York fashion shows, I was like, why don't you produce my fashion show? I'm sure you could do it. And once I quit the job, I'm like, I called him up. I'm like, I'm doing your show. Fashion weeks in two and a half weeks. Let's do this. You never had a show in New York City before. Let's do it. So I did. I had over 100 press there. It was really a great experience for me. And I and at the end of it, I was like, I can do this. Mm-hmm. Um, I had some really great support with sponsors um, like Cashmere Keratin, who I love. They're a really great hairline. Pop Beauty, um, Regal Wings, amongst a lot of other people. And I just realized that I really loved making a fashion show, that I loved the idea of being the wedding planner of fashion shows, that I went to people, I'm like, what do you want? I'll do it for you. What is your budget? Let's make it happen. Because, you know, um, I feel it was very similar to the idea that I had with my acting where I wanted to tell someone, you know, what do you want to be on? And let's say someone wanted to be on an ABC family TV show, and I'll be like, okay, do you have a headshot? What's your resume look like? Do you have a reel? Um, what have you been doing? How can I make this happen? Like, let's reach out. To have, what have auditions have you gone on? What monologues do you know? Like, what have you learned? What classes have you taken? It's no different than putting together a production or putting together a successful actress or putting a music music video together. Because I knew I had done kind of like my own experiment a few years before with a friend of mine of the idea of having a company where I, I could wake up tomorrow morning and say I want to produce a music video, and I had a list literally of 700 names that I wrote out of people that I knew who could star in it, a band that I could make put in it. If I didn't have a band, I had different musicians, I had a singer, I can get models, I'd audition. The only money I'd have to spend would be on video editing. And I knew I could put it together. So the same mindset was with these fashion shows, and thus Star Baby Enterprises was born. Um, Star Baby Enterprises, the name came about because my mother, when she was like dating my dad, had the baby company called Star Baby Enterprises, and she hadn't done anything with it, and I needed to have a name. For my company, she gave it to me, and I thought I was gonna hate it at first, but it's grown on me. And um, yeah, so basically, to put everything in a nutshell, what I do is uh, Star Baby Enterprises, which is me and a couple of amazing uh, interns and, and people. Um, 
we help young and experienced professionals in the entertainment and fashion industry successfully brand market themselves. I do marketing, I do PR, I do advertising, I do event production, social media. Um, I have my finger in a lot of pies because you have to know everything. Um, it's the only way to make it successful. Um, I, I have people that I'm, I mean, I'm now working with a lot of cosmetic companies, like Icebox USA is one of the companies I'm currently working with. I'm helping them get a, a footing in New York City. I'm, I'm working with um, other cosmetic lines. I'm working with musicians and models and actors and fashion designers. Like right now I'm getting booked up for Fashion Week. So um, it's really great to see what this small dream I have and now all these people want to work with me and now it's just about making it happen and making everyone a star baby. So kind of making them all star within themselves and realizing that they can do it on their own as well. Well, I think that's, I think that's awesome because, of, you know, some, you know, certain people, you know, within this industry, you know, and I've heard a lot of, you know, a lot of my friends who are actors and singers and whatnot say this, like, well, I'm just an artist. All I know to do is just make art. I, mm -hmm. All I know, all I, only thing I know to do is just act or, or, or sing or, or tell jokes or whatever. And they just mm -hmm. can't fathom the business of aspect of things. And I think someone like you who has an idea of both worlds, I think, is a, is a beautiful thing. Mm -hmm. I mean, I kind of almost like the babysitter, but I'm also, you know, I have the tools or at least the knowledge, and sometimes I just have, like, the concept, but I can help people go from here and kind of bring them to the finish line. I won't cross it for them unless they ask me to, but I can at least give them the tools or the advice to help them cross the finish line. And, and that's important to me because... I feel like everyone deserves a chance to be successful and and no one should be told that they're not they're not allowed to do it. Like I had a manager who I used to work with uh, tell me when I told her that I, I went on I was rushing on this thing and someone asked me to help them and I realized that I kind of want to be a manager. Like eventually in my life I want to have an agency and I want to be a manager and I want to um, help people um, and manage their careers like I was telling you before. Um, yeah, that, that was my next question to you because I know some people I ain't going to say no names. There's some people that need some management around here. I ain't going to say no names, but they need some management, need some guidance. Mm -hmm. you know, certain, somebody don't know what he's doing, but that, I'm going to leave you <laughs> don't, don't talk about that when the cameras is off. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, managing to me, it really is just about grooming and expertise. So, for instance, if someone tells me, you know, I want to... I don't know, what's a, what's a good thing to say? Like, I want to get a, I want to get an agent. I think that's a, that's a question that everyone asks. I want to get an agent, Jordan. How do I get an agent? So I sat up with the first person I saw. I met this person the other day. I'm like, great. What have they done? What is their most successful client? How many clients do they have? Where are they from? Are they, are they bi-coastal? Are they in Chicago as well? Do they have an international office? Like, who do you see yourself as? You know, you really have to take, it's, and everyone's individual. I mean, there are people who just want to do theater in New York City. That's all they want to do. Or they just want to play all the, they want to be the house band at the most popular venue in New York City. Or they, they just want to sing. Like, I have, I have a photographer I work with. He's just like, I don't need to be famous. I just want to take pictures. You have to understand where you want to be, and you have to be true to yourself. Like, I see myself here. This is where I want. This is what I want to get to, and that's it. And then I'm like, okay, so I'll call up this person, and I'll call up that person, and I'll find out when the next intensive is. And you want an agent? Okay, let's see the next person... Where do you want to eventually get to? Well, I want to go to Interscope Records. I want to go to Def Jam, or I want to go to Sony, or I want to go with Roadrunner Records. And, you know, I call them up, and I'm like, well, how do you take new artists? And when's the next thing? Or, or I have a client who's performing at this so-and-so place. Like, we'd love to invite you to come out, and we'll have a complimentary bottle of champagne. Like, that, that to me is so exciting, the idea of helping someone become successful. You know, I wish there was something like that for myself, so one day hopefully I'll do it for myself, but, you know, it to me it's it's important as a manager to not only just manage but educate because I'm doing all the work and that's what you're, you're going to like use me for or pay me for or use my name for, but I want you to know what I'm doing. I don't want you to sit down one day and someone say, well, what is your manager actually doing? Oh, I don't know. They're helping me get famous. No, I want you to be like, oh, well, last week she called this person, and this weekend she's doing this thing, and I'm trying to get in this studio, and she's in the middle of producing a fashion show she's going to try to get me to perform at. Like, I want, I want 
people to know what's going on because I think that's half the problem is that you know there are so many people involved in making a career that you really don't know who does what so it's like if I bake a pie and I don't know where the one dude's getting his eggs from what if we run out of eggs can the eggs in the other store work? I mean, it's it's like that. It's something as simple like that. At least to me, it, it's as simple as that. Does that make sense? Oh, no, it makes a lot of sense because it goes back to, you know, you know a lot of artists not knowing the industry. You know what I mean? Yeah. And you, know, you definitely want somebody that has their best intentions for you. And you. And I think the, the, the great part about you and what you do is that you're on both sides. You know, you started as an actress and you're still an actress. So you know what that artist's lifestyle is. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And, you know, and like I say, you, you have to know who you are. You know, for me, for example, it's funny. The other day I was having a conversation with somebody and I was, I was frustrated. I was mad. I was angry, as usual. But, uh, no, I'm not angry. Uh, but I was saying, like, man, I only got a, a small fan base. I only have a small fan base. What am I doing wrong? So I had to kind of analyze, you know, what I was doing. Mm -hmm. and, and one of the things I came to the conclusion was that, and it goes back to what I was saying with the name change and everything. When I've been on other podcasts or what I've traversed with other people within my community, they don't know how to take me. I kind of, I kind of see that they don't know how to take me. They expect me because you know, within this community, there's a very monolithic view of us. Okay, so when they they see me or they speak to me, they expect some kid with a Star Wars shirt. Mm -hmm. You know, I do own a couple of Star Wars shirts. Um, belly out to here, drinking Mountain Dew, coat red, socially <laughs> awkward. You know, then when they meet me and they're like, okay, this dude got on blinged out jewelry, all su suited up. They're just like, okay. You know what I mean? Like, they just kind of like, they don't know how to, they don't know how to take me. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And I, and I do think I have intimidated some people. I'm not going to well, say anything. But <laughs> I mean, you're, you're right. I mean, if you are putting a name out there and the name on its own doesn't translate to the image you're providing, then that's the dis that's like the biggest disconnect. I mean, I'll tell you a, per a personal thing. It, um, so my name's Jordan Gelber. Everyone who knows me, I'm Jordan, right? But I started mm -hmm. making myself Jordan Elizabeth Gelber, and, and in the union, I'm Jordan Elizabeth Gelber, and on IMDb, I'm on Jordan Elizabeth Gelber, and on Facebook, and all those great things. And that's because there's an already an actor who's successful named Jordan Gelber, who's an older gentleman, and... I know that whatever I'm doing, when I'm doing it for marketing and spamming my face out there is right because a girl that I went to high school with, she uh, interned at a casting agency a couple years ago, and she messaged me on Facebook, and she's like, Jordan, I had the funniest thing happen today. I was was at the agency, and someone, and this guy, this actor, Jordan Gelber, came in to audition, and I said, oh, my God, I went to high school with a girl named Jordan Elizabeth Gelber, Jordan Gelber. She's an actress, too, in New York City. And he said, I think I know who she is. Sometimes when I Google my name, her face comes up. And I was like, yes, that's what ha should happen. But that's the thing. You have to make sure, like, people people call me up, like, oh, were you on Boardwalk Empire? No, I'm not that cool yet. That was the other Jordan Gelb, but that was the, the guy who's more successful. Um, you know, he's very successful. He was in the original cast of Avenue Q. So for me to have the same name and be a female, it's very hard for me. So when people meet me, they're expecting to see, like, a dude or they're expecting to talk to some Buddy else, you know, so I understand completely what you're saying about like people assuming that you're gonna look differently than the way you, that you look because of your name, and um, yeah, that's that. <laughs> no, it, it, it's so it, it's so important and everything, and just re, and you gotta look at yourself as a brand. You yeah, know, you have to. I think that's the most important thing. You have to be a brand. I look at myself as a brand. What does my brand say about me? Because my brand essentially is an extension of me. Mm hmm. You, know. you are your product. Absolutely. Um, I mean, my my whole my thesis in college was about young and experienced professionals in the entertainment industry using social media to brand market themselves because the image you put out there is what people are seeing. You know, and, and they need to know that that's the kind of person they want to hang out with, they want to party with. If I if I put pictures up online where I'm looking like a frumpy dump 
and I'm not taking care of myself, and I'm and I'm like, oh, well, this is me Friday night. I'm all like, Aw, like this. No one's gonna talk to me. No one's gonna respect me. No one's gonna think I'm in fashion. No one's gonna think that I have my own company. No one's. Everyone's gonna think, oh, she's some dumb 25 year old drunk girl from New York who probably lives on her couch with mommy and daddy and doesn't do anything. And you know what? If I come off that way, then I'm doing it wrong. Because, like you said, you are your product. I mean. What inspired me with business, I my backup plan was to be in advertising. I figured if I could sell a box of Wheaties, I could sell myself. Because what is an actor? What is an entertainer? You're a box of Wheaties. If you're if you're if no one wants to eat your Wheaties, you have to figure out why. And that's because you aren't like your brand isn't translating the people you want to translate to. It's it's like saying I you know fiber cereal a five year old's not going to eat that you know or a fifteen year old's not going to eat that you need to find out like what works best for you if you're telling me that you want to have a couture line that's going to be in deep burgundy well you know your age group is going to change sufficiently you have to really figure out where you stand and who you're attracting and why you're attracting those people see yes that's why you got to learn how to whore yourself. You gotta know how to pimp yourself. For lack of a better <laughs> word, yeah, you gotta know. You gotta know how to pour yourself and be a good pimp. There you go. That's what you have to do. This is why. This is why we hire you so you can pimp us. <laughs> That's what I should do. I should make that my tagline on my website. Star Baby Enterprises. We pimp you out. Um, yeah. Cause I'm a horrible pimp. I, I'll be honest with you. I'm a horrible pimp. I, I'm too nice. Like I said, at least you're honest. I, I, I'm serious. My pimp hands, my pimp hand is not strong. I'm too nice. I I said this on one show one time. I said I'd be I lose money. I'm too much of a nice guy. I couldn't slap no girl. I fuck around, lose all kinds of money. She'd come to me and be like, "Daddy, I ain't have the money that I'm supposed to have." And I'll fuck around and be like, "You know what? You give me that money when you give it to me. Don't worry about it. We in a discussion. You get it to me. The world out. It's okay. I'll be the brokest." In the world, I'll be too. My pin hand is not strong. Yeah, it's it's hard. It, it really is. I say one one of the hardest things about having in your own company, especially when you just start out, which I am. You know, like I've experienced being a freelance graphic designer and stuff, but being in the in this to be a bigger bigger industry, um, it's hard because you want to say yes to everybody. But let me tell you, when it, when push comes to shove, I am a tough as fuck manager. I will kick your ass if you do something wrong. I will bust you up. Because that's the thing. People will take advantage of you if you let them. And, and um, you know, so I, I have the bark. I don't mind going in and being like, yo, son, slow your roll. <laughs> or, like, yo, Greg, get your ass out the goddamn strip club. What's wrong with you? Married. I mean, <laughs> the people that I work with now, you know, the people that I that I have my like my second in command. I told her flat out. I said, I said, Stephanie, you know, you're one of my friends, and I and I love working with you. I'm really glad that you're coming on board. I just want you to be okay with the fact that at some point in time, you're gonna have to say, Jordan, shut the f up and get your work done. Because I'll go all over the place. I'll take this project and this project and this project and this project and put everything together. But you know, if you don't have strong people around you, like telling you like what's up, you can't be a strong manager because really, you are on the top, but you're you're fed by the people around you and who you're managing. Because if they don't respect you as a manager, they're certainly not going to respect you as a person. And then you're. Well, see, you're, you're I think old. that even goes even that even goes far as being just a boss. Period. Because you're a boss. Like, listen, this is uh, uh, Dame Dash uh, said this best. Somebody who and I'm just paraphrasing, but somebody who runs a company on somebody else's dime, you're just a supervisor. You're not a boss. Mm -hmm. But if you front your own money, excuse me, then you're a boss. Mm -hmm. Being a boss is not easy. It really isn't. I mean, because people depend on you. You know, it's not an easy job. Because there's no one else to blame but you. Exactly, it, it, and also to work. And girl, let me tell you something. I can. We'll, we'll, I ain't gonna get into. Cause I won't put nobody on blast. But we'll talk after the show off camera. But the girl, there was some. Anybody that knows. In 2013, just passed. What I went through with this brand with certain people. When I had a team, and it didn't work right, and I had to, you know, make some decisions and, and not mess with these people. There's even certain people who I'm still in connect with, but I'm starting to realize it's got to be more in the friendship 
uh, tip because a lot of times people don't have the same vision as you or not even the same vision, they don't want to put in the same amount of work. Yes. You know what I mean? They I don't mean, want to put in the same amount of work. And when you're all over the place and you're running shit, you need the help because you could have did 30 different other things if you had help. And it's kind of like, well, listen, I don't have time to run after you for every little thing you do. I should be able to rely on you that this shit's going to get done. Of course. You know? so, yeah, I mean, I dealt with that in my last job. As, even though I left on a very rough note on my last job, I will say this. I, I was trained immensely on how important it is to have a good right hand and how important it is to understand and respect your manager and your boss. Mm -hmm. um, because for me, I was working with another girl when I first started the company, and, and she really tried very hard to deal with me. But towards the end, I got very rough on her. But the fact was, you know, in crunch time, if you're accepting to be my sorry, that's my phone off. If you're accepting to be my right hand in the trenches with me, you can't run away crying because this is what you sign up for. This is what you know you have to understand is going on. You have to know who's doing what. And if I'm all over the place and I'm not helping you and I'm stopping you from getting your work done, you need to sit me down and tell me because without my help, you don't know where to go. And it's okay to ask for help. But yeah, being a boss is really rough. But I love it. I wouldn't have it any other way. I really I really wouldn't. I really, I, I woke up and I was like, I'm so sick of working for other people, especially people that don't accept or have accepted how talented I am but want to abuse that talent and keep saying they're teaching me and but they're gonna promote me soon or whatever and they just keep telling me how I have more to learn and more to learn and more to learn and it's like I've learned enough like when when is this when I mean to me the financial you know reward wasn't worth the bullshit anymore and I'd rather work for myself and get myself an honest dollar than hate myself working for somebody else and, Ooh, and girl you went to the bottom of the ocean on that one Oh, I did. Oh, I'm telling you, I am deep. I'm like, that's deep what I'm talking about. That's, Ooh, that's deep. That, that's, I'm at that place, man. You, I don't like working for nobody. I don't like having a boss. I don't like being, uh, I, as I like to say, I don't like going to the plantation every day. <laughs> I don't like going to the plantation. I like working for myself. And, you know, it, you know, it was funny when I was going through my situation with the team. When I finally spoke my mind, you know, I got labeled asshole and all these things and I was you know very polite about things and it's funny you know I, I'm like you know I'm be I'm sit here I'm being a nice guy I'm getting my ass kicked you know what I mean of course no I mean you really gotta the thing is is that it's funny you have to know when to be humble but know when to show your balls and and for me I think it was really funny I had a big blow up with my last boss and and she did some very mean things but bless her heart she trained me way too well. Um, but I got I got interviewed by the New York Post about her and how crazy she was. So in the end <laughs> I, I, in the end I was much happier. So you know th and that's what happens. But through her I, I learned a lot of things and I and I really I grew as a as a woman, as a woman in business. Um, you know, and that and women in business are hard. They are tough people. They are they are some vengeful bitches. I'm sorry, but they are. And I'll like bigger old... bones with some dudes I know. Shit. I know. <laughs> but I know one day some twenty year old girl will be saying that about me. So bless her heart when that happens. I'll buy her a cookie. So I mean <laughs> but that that's that's I mean that's it's a fact. We're, but I feel like entrepreneurial people are are so what's hot right now. You know, just being your own boss. Well, but not a lot of people up for it. Well, yeah, I, well, especially with the age of the internet and everything. Like oh, yeah. That, but I don't think they understand what the work that entails in there. You know, it's one thing to, you know, have to go and, and have somebody give you something, but to go out and actually, it's, it's oh, yeah. kind of like being the hunter. Okay, it's one thing to go to the supermarket and buy your food, you know what I mean? But it's another thing to now you got to actually go out and hunt that food. Oh, yeah. You got to plant them seeds. Oh, yeah, people yeah. don't understand the concept of weeds. They really don't. Oh, like, it's a, a lot. You yeah. know, and, and payroll and signing checks and all these things, and yeah, it's twenty-four hour business. Oh yeah, but, like, but you know. and people people hate how much I work, but I mean, what the day I take off, 
and it's like the whole world crashes because mm. you know the 24 hours every hour I can make a hundred dollars of what so let's, let's just say I can make hundred dollars an hour that's a twenty four hundred dollar loss that's every day you don't work it's like possibility is endless time is what you make it I'm getting very deep again we gotta be funny <laughs> well shit I got, let me tell you something I tell people all the time there's one thing you can't get back in this world is time pet peeve of mine I don't like my time being wasted money, oh, yeah. money comes and goes you lose money, you gain it back, whatever, do what you got to do. You got to go and, and sell nickel and dime bags or sell your ass or whatever. <laughs> I don't care. But you'll get that money back. Mm -hmm. But time, you can't get back. Don't waste my time. Yeah, time, time is, is more valuable back. than money. It really is. Absolutely, absolutely. Because that could have been time for you being great at something. Yeah. I mean, just, just think, if you took five minutes a day just to write what you want to do, You'll be thinking about it all day, and you'll be more motivated to do those things, and and that'll change. It, it's just the way you change your mindset. Like I'm, I'm lazy as hell. It's been rough with the holidays and shit. And tomorrow, today is January first. I've been dying for today. I've been like January first. No, it's freaking bullshit. I'm gonna like utilize every second of every day. And that's why when you know you and I were both on Facebook tonight, I was like, "What are you doing tonight?" My plans fell through. We had this interview. What a great way to start 2014 by saying. We're both going to become successful by bringing the new year, by putting this positive energy out there, by we're going to take over the fucking world. And that's exactly what should happen. Damn right, I'm going to take over the world. This shit going to work out. I'm running in niggas' houses. now. I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still dime bags. I'm still... Uh, no, I'm kidding. No, but um, yeah, for sure. It was funny. You know, he's like, you want to do a show? I'm like, oh, yeah, shit. Sure. I'm like, I'm up for it. What's good, baby? Like, I'm, I'm up for anything. I'm like, shit, dude, this is really popping. Let me tell you something, man. You can work hard as you want. You can work to the bones, but opportunity knocks. You don't grab that bull by the horn, don't mean shit. Yep. Don't mean a damn thing if you don't take the bull by the horn. I'm always, always trying to make sure I'm prepared for an opportunity somebody gives it to me. Mm-hmm. Like real talk. Like I said, either like I said, this shit don't work out, then I'll, I'll look at other ventures. Like I don't know. <laughs> what? I, don't know. I, I, I ain't good at too many things. <laughs> well, here's, here's something I always tell myself, because, you know, being in this industry, we're cocky bastards, so I always say to myself, or when or one of my friends who says this to me, they're like, oh, I'm afraid I'm going to fail. We can't fail, and we can't fail not because, oh my God, it can't happen, but we can't fail because it's a function that my body just doesn't do. You gotta, train yourself. you gotta train yourself for that. Yeah. So it's like it's like a robot. If a robot has different functions and they they bake the bread and they do whatever or whatever, if it doesn't have a specific function, it's not gonna do that. So if you just tell yourself you're not capable of failing because it's not possible, you just don't do that, then that's the kind of stuff you're gonna put out there. If you're like, Oh my god, I'm gonna fail, you know, oh my god, with this, this falls through, this one. I mean, yeah, I don't get me wrong, I think about that. Like, everybody thinks that please. Freaking Donald Trump with all his money and millions and golden toilet seats. I'm sure he still thinks about what am I going to fail. But he does. He psychs himself out of it because he's got the experience. So it's just a matter of knowing what you're worth and being like, oh, well, no matter what, it's going to work out because it has to. What's the option? Saying to yourself, oh, my God, it's not going to work out and I'm not going to pay rent and, and no one's going to love me anymore. What the hell is going to happen with that? You're just going to be a sad sack of shit in the corner and no one's going to want to talk to you anyway. Listen, somebody speak that dumb shit. I just tell you, you know what? Go jump out of a fucking window, okay? Go <laughs> pop a Molly shit. Tell you. <laughs> Anybody got time for that, man? Anybody got time for that nonsense? That's true. Like, yeah, we all get brutal in self doubt, but, yeah. I mean, listen, this is, uh, this is how I say it. Either get it or die trying. Either this what? shit gonna work or this shit's gonna work. Cause <laughs> exactly. Exactly. There ain't nothing else I can foresee myself doing. Like it's funny, like how you know how um, determined I am because you know the kid that I was when I was a kid. Like I like it's weird that I, I want to you know I want to be you know that I'm an entertainer and that I, I want to be an entrepreneur and run my own company. You know because when I was a kid I was like a little asshole. Like I was a little jerk. Like I was like the laziest kid in the world. Like I always like I was a kid that always got in trouble. Not because I was mouthful off in school, because I was a very respectful kid, but because I never did my homework. 
<laughs> so, so it's kind of weird to see that, like to see the kid that I was and the man I grew up to be, because you know I never did homework. I don't know because it never makes sense to me. I was just kind of like I looked at my parents. I was like, you go to work eight hours a day. You come home. You relax. Why can't I? Home and work. That shit don't gel. With That's me. true. I feel you. I agree with that. I will come home and relax. Shit. Why well, I do homework? I learn enough in school. Shit. I I can barely read now. I'm 31 years old. <laughs> No, definitely. Definitely. I was the same oh, yeah. I, didn't, I didn't really flourish to college, so I completely understand. I'm like, oh, fucking school, I hate you. Well, did you graduate from college? I did. I graduated in 2010. Well, shit, you did better than me. I'm a, you're talking to a college dropout. Shit. <laughs> you know what? I think no matter what, you learned something, and it's always about the takeaway. So there are people, I mean, what's his face? Bill Gates? No. Bill Gates? Yeah, Bill Gates dropped out of college. He didn't finish. He became a freaking gazillionaire. I mean, everyone's got their thing. You gotta if school isn't for you, then make the best and make your own education. That's all I say. I think yeah. if I did, if I can go back, I probably just wouldn't have went to school. I probably just wouldn't have went to school. I just would have went straight to pursuing what I wanted to do. I think I wouldn't went to school. I don't think I really dropped out technically. I just stopped going to class. I just one day woke up and was like, I don't go to class. I never went. I'm probably still enrolled. <laughs> <laughs> And the sad what, part what's is, the courses for this year? Yeah, and the sad part is I dropped out of junior college, which is even sadder. It's like, who the fuck drops out of junior college? Like, <laughs> nah. See, that's how lazy I was. I could have went to university, but no, it was just like, you know, my dad was like, you went to uh, Jersey City State, and I was like, why? I don't have to take a test. I could just go to community college. And fill an application, 15 bucks, I'm in, baby. <laughs> This is the mindset of me back in the day. Crazy. Absolutely. But, uh, but uh, so tell my listeners and viewers where they can find you. Right? Plug all your stuff from your website. Yes, your my website right now is up, but it's going to be under construction. It is going to be filled with all new information, hopefully before Fashion Week. Um, so don't worry about that right now. But the best places to find me, uh, you can go to my Facebook fan page at Jordan Elizabeth Gelber. Um, also, you can always tweet me. Um, at Starbaby ENTNYC for Starbaby Enterprises. And from there, there's a link to my Twitter, which is HarlequinFace666. So if it's too much to spell out, you can just find it there. But the best place to find me is Starbaby ENTNYC and my uh, personal Facebook fan page. So I'm going to be getting all the good virtual stuff for Starbaby coming up hopefully this year, obviously. Um, but I'm in the middle of getting all new photos and all new uh, material and everything and all the new affiliates that I have. So. Oh, and yeah, I'll be having tickets up soon. Yes, please check out if any aspiring actors, singers, models. Please holler at her. Get at her. And I hope, even if you don't, hopefully you watch this and it'll be a great learning experience. And you get your ass out there and make something of yourself. Or, like I said, go sell drugs or something. I don't know what else to tell you. But uh, <laughs> we'll, do some, we'll do some with your life. But please we'll check this yeah, please check this young lady out because you know and, and give her respect because she's doing a lot of big things. Give her a round of applause for that. And, and thank you. Know, bring the arm. Um, I'm out. I'm out of. I'm out of news. Aww. Uh, wah, wah. That's sad. Actually, no, I'm not. Is I have more in there, but I'm just too lazy. I don't feel like getting up. I'll get up. <laughs> uh, but uh, but I uh, thank you for coming on my show. Thank you for having me. In this, this midnight madness, and hopefully you'll come back soon and everything. Definitely. And uh, hold on, we're, we're going to talk off air in a bit. But before I go, I'm going to plug myself. If you want to follow me, follow me on Twitter at Gregory Hall 5000. You follow me on Twitter. Don't follow me in real life because that shit is just fucking creepy. But yes, follow me on Twitter. Tweet me. I will tweet you back. I'm not a jerk. Contrary to pop belief, I am not a jerk, and I'm not always angry. But tweet me, and I'll tweet you back. Or you can also like me on Facebook at a uh, Facebook slash Gregory Hall 5000. That is the official fan page for this show, Gregory Hall Live. And also subscribe to our YouTube channel, uh, YouTube slash Geek Supremacy Project, which is subject to change very soon. I don't know yet, but it is. We can be done with this name soon. And if you have any suggestions for some names, tweet me. You know, we'll conversate. Let me know. I'm open to suggestions. I may not accept it, but hell, you know, whatever. It's what it is. Unless you're a pretty girl. I don't fuck with you. If you. If you if you get a pretty chick with a nice body, then I'll listen. But if you're some rusty, dusty dude, man, chick rocks. Go get a job. 
Papa Molly. Do something with your life. <laughs> but thank you for riding with us, folks, and uh, be back soon with another episode. Hopefully, uh, Jen and I will be back next Sunday for the Greg and Jen show. And uh, I actually, I actually have some uh, awesome guests coming up next month in the month of January, so be on the lookout for that. We have a lot of great people coming on the show, so be on the lookout for that. And uh, Happy New Year's and all that good stuff, and thank God the fucking holidays are over, so we can go back to our normal lives. And thank you for riding with us. This is Gregory Hall from Gregory Hall Live, and we're out of here. Peace.